Good morning, my friends. It's Saturday, January 20th, and I'm here with you at the Rising of the Sun. Found another beautiful illustration from a medieval manuscript. This is from the 8th century. This is Ezra, the prophet. He has returned to Jerusalem after being in exile, and he has found the scrolls of the book of Deuteronomy. But as if he were a medieval scribe, he is rewriting, copying the sacred texts. So this is a great example of how they did it. They would sit there by hand with a pen, which was a basically a piece of material with a sharp edge dipped in ink and they would painstakingly write or illustrate such as this illustration so they assumed as we all assume that the characters in the bible looked like them and acted like them so they are envisioning ezra copying the texts which isn't actually in the bible but could have happened for sure But this is how they had to duplicate the word. No Xerox machines, no computers, no printing presses even, but just a person by hand, sometimes at night by candlelight, copying as an act of devotion. And when you copy something, it really does sink into your soul. That's why teachers sometimes used to make us copy um, something when we did something wrong, like I will not lie or something, because they knew it would sink into us. So the word of God sinks into these scribes as they copy it. We continue in the book of Genesis. Abram goes down to Egypt because there's a famine, which has echoes of many more times that people will go down to Egypt because there's a famine in the book of Genesis. But as they're going, he, he realizes his wife, Sarai, is very beautiful. So he says, when we go there, just say you're my sister, because then they'll want to please me and we'll be in good shape. If you say you're my wife, they'll want to kill me. So we go down to Egypt and they and Abram lies and says that his wife is his sister. Well, she's so beautiful, Pharaoh takes him for himself, takes her for himself. And Sarai goes into Pharaoh's bedchamber as one of his mistresses. Meanwhile, Abram flourishes and everybody wants to please him and he gets even wealthier. But Pharaoh starts suffering from plagues, a foretaste of the book of Exodus. When Pharaoh learns the truth, he calls Abram in and says, why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Look what's happening to my household. We're all sick. Get out of here. And he kicks Abram and Sarai out of Egypt, but he doesn't kill them. Later, Isaac, his son, when foreigners come, will also lie that his wife is his sister. There is a feminist biblical scholar, Phyllis Tickle, who calls these texts of terror. Because if you think about it from the perspective of the woman, what a horrible, horrible thing happened to Sarai. No one ever asked her permission. And here she was handed off to someone to be raped just because her husband was a coward. These are really texts of terror from the perspective of women. No wonder Jesus came and took women with him and revealed his resurrection to them first. Um, what a different kind of man, the son of God kind of man. So we feel for Sarai today and for all women who are trafficked and who need to tell their stories. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this day. Give us courage to see in scripture the history of, of the human race and our relationship with you, but some of that entails terrible things, texts of terror. 
and yet all of it for us followers of Jesus sets the stage for the coming of Christ whom we needed and we still need so badly. We pray especially today for all women who are hurt or abused or treated as prostitutes who have suffered from rape or other kinds of human trafficking. All across the world, we pray for women today. We ask you to bless the sick and the suffering and those who mourn. We ask you to bring peace to the whole earth. We ask you to give us a reverence for this earth that we may not rape her, but love her and honor her. We ask that you would guide our footsteps today, Lord Christ, that we may be more like you, walking simply on this earth with others, praying, healing. Give us purpose today to be your followers and guide us in our steps. This we pray in the name of the Son of God who liberated women, taught them, honored them, and showed his resurrected self to them first so that they might preach to others of life eternal. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.